good lord, good. It, hey, it's like it's been a couple minutes since we've done a stream, have it? Yes. So, in case y'all forgotten who we are, it's Hexy, Wardrobe, and McMurray. All right, we do play games. Some of us paint miniatures and do little things like that. We're still out here. We we haven't run away. I know y'all watch McMurray every Wednesday night, but uh, uh, Todd and I have. We haven't done. Uh, God, we've been. It's like everything's so stinking busy, man. I mean, all the stuff going on at work, but it doesn't matter because tonight we got a special guest coming on here with us. That somebody that I think I called about just about a year ago, and of course he plays the stuff that I love, and he also plays things that these two guys like too and are into. So. We're going to bring him on right now, and I want to introduce to you guys. This is Alan, a.k.a. Camp Sawyer. Alan, how you doing, buddy? How you doing, everyone? Hexy, Wardrobe, McMurray. Hey. Good stuff. Thank you, guys, for having me on. Sure. Our pleasure. Now, y'all know that everybody out there knows the routine. We're going to grill him in the ground until he's crying or he bails on us. All right? So if y'all got any questions in the in the – in the, in the crowd out there, fire them away. We'll try to grab them. You know, Todd and I used to do a pretty good job where he, he monitors that stuff real well. So we're going to find out a little bit here about Alan tonight. Um, first off, YouTube. His YouTube channel is Camp Sawyer. And there it is right there. Let me let me big in that for a second. Hold on. Get over there, check out his site. The games, I love the games he plays because they're all right up my alley. And yeah. like I say, he plays some flying color stuff, which I know Andrew loves that game. He plays Panzer, Panzer Grenadier, which is stuff that Todd dabbles in. So y'all get over to his channel. If you're not subscribed, subscribe to it. And I'm going to tell you something, his videos are good. And he, I'm going to make a point here about him in just a second to the, okay, now this is a compliment that I'm about to give you. All right. <laughs> he is the new Callendale to me. Oh, because he plays games to the end and he films with the camera in his hand, just like we've all seen Callendale do. Now, he doesn't ramble on as much, but he gives you the <laughs> details turn by turn of what he's playing and he finishes stuff. Where's warm up when I say that? Why is he not on here watching this? So he can say, well, there had to be somebody out there in this world that does that. All right. So, Alan, let's let's well, let's let's get this started right here. <laughs> let's talk sure. about. Where did you come into this war gaming thing? When did you start and how did you start? Uh, way back in the day. I actually go back. First game, Avalon Hill, Panzer, Blitz. Yep. My brother had it. My brother had it. Oh, yeah. My brother had it. He he got me into it at first. I, I was staying up with him uh, when he was up at uh, up at school. Uh, college and he had uh, he had it there got hooked on that and about a year later uh i got third reich second edition wow yeah you you jumped yep. up from moderate to hardcore I, I went deep and fast but it was a christmas present it was a christmas present so it was like oh, oh this is super cool you know so you know starting it out Back then, um, some odd years ago, <laughs> yeah, I had no clue about it. And it took a couple of years before I was smart en or old enough or smart enough to figure it out. Uh, but by that time, I picked up like Panzer Leader and, and uh, Gettysburg, uh, same one, um, Hex, you played a couple of a few videos ago, not with the new rules. I got to get those one of these days, but picked up that. And uh, and was immediately was immediately hooked um, from there. So and but it also helped that a neighbor actually had my friendly local game store owner. Uh, he was my next door neighbor. Yeah. So it's kind of like after school, you know, going to high school. Uh, after that point, it's kind of like you go down to the game store because it was just at the bottom of the hill from the high school, and Lord. we had everything. <laughs> you, had it. you had like the perfect childhood. Oh yeah, it was it it was awesome. Of course, today I can't find a game store within fifty miles of me, but that's another story. <laughs> oh oh oh, they're they're probably everywhere. But unless you're playing Might and Magic or something or Warhammer, 
There's, you know, uh, yeah, I got one exactly. Five. So, yep, exactly. Well, well, I can play. I can play magic over at the library here. You know, they have a right. kids' uh, afternoon type of thing over there. But yeah, there's, 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 there's nothing around any anymore. But I, you know, I was into it, and well, and at that time too, you know, this was back. Start dating myself here, mid '80s. Uh, you know, there was still a lot of game groups around locally. You know, we didn't have the internet, but there was enough guys around that would come. And we, there was a um, Goodwill. There was a, there was an excellent building to play because it was like a huge warehouse um, around the well, not around the corner, a few miles away. And uh, but we used to get together there to play uh, weekends and you know special times and everything like that. Um, so we had that. But uh, you know, then after that, you start getting into college and you start becoming an adult. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and uh well, just didn't give it up life. didn't give it up <laughs> didn't give it up games so, just okay. kind of went in the closet a little bit you know well okay well and, in your uh, in the young years when you were playing what okay so yeah the only, the only words i've heard come out of your mouth were avalon hill so in that whole series what was your favorite of the uh, even today what's your favorite of from the avalon hill system and I'm not talking about anything that is Hasbro now. I'm talking about old Avalon Hill. Oh no, no. yeah, yeah, the old, the old Avalon Hill. That's a tough one. It's it's probably going to be the very original. What you guys playing? Squad Leader, the original, the original, okay. original. Because that was that was magic when it came out. And I had, I had, I think it's a second edition of that. But that just I, when I saw that that one I didn't see in the game store. I actually saw it in a toy store. Uh, back when you could get the games over there as well. And that was just magic. When you looked at the back of the box on that one, it was like, yeah. oh, I was yep. playing Panzer Blitz and I thought that was great. Now I've got detail, you know, to the nth degree. You know, I got miniature detail now. Um, yeah. And that was mm. that was big. We played that. We, we played that to death. <laughs> the That's rule book, awesome. I still have the rule books on those and those are those are tattered, you know. I should I should chuck them out, but I can't get rid of them. You know they're ripped off the the what do you call it the the um, staples the staples. You know, oh man, <laughs> staples are all rusted and ripped off, and <laughs> I've had to tape it up here and there, and you know That's everything so else. Great. Still got what it. What about though. what about naval Avalon Hill? Let's see, if we can't get Andrew sparked here. Did you play any naval naval Avalon, Avalon Hill? I, I heard you I mention did play the original Jutland. Today. The original that's sitting right there. There you go. Where you you mentioned <laughs> wooden ships, Iron Men in your videos about uh, flying colors. Oh yeah, that yep. a, a, a smash hit yep. as well. A big fan. That was a very. That was. I'll, I'll tell you. I got a good story on that one too. Because my uh, my father, he loved to sail. He was a big big sailor. And that was actually one of. I think I got that one somewhere around like Gettysburg that time, late seventies, early eighties. And at that time he was trying to teach me how to sail. And, you know, we just had little sunfish type sailboat, you know, which is great to just go around lakes and stuff like that. And uh, I couldn't get the hang of it at all. I mean, I was flipping that thing. I mean, gust of wind would come up and I'd be, you know, we'd be over, you know, <laughs> I, I, I just couldn't get the hang of it at all. And, uh, so then I got wooden ships and Iron Man, started reading it and playing it, and then it then it clicked. It was just like, oh, I get it now. The wind well, direction, cool. I get it. That's awesome. So after that, after that, you know, still it got easier. I mean, we still tipped over and stuff like that, but it got a heck of a lot easier. And I from that I just love sailing now, you know, lakes and, and um oceans and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I mean uh, these games go beyond just you know, uh, fun time to play. You know, you can learn stuff from them. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'll see. So, yeah. Wooden ships, I had that. I did play Jutland. I was thinking, I, I, that popped into my mind back at the, you know, Goodwill. We had the space, we had the space for it. You know, oh, that was my next question. Set that out you, on the floor. Yeah, it was, did you play the table adaptation or the floor game? That's awesome. That's Is it awesome. lore? <laughs> we had the space. Is it, um, yep. is Jutland a, a, a blind one like Midway, or is it just big? Is it kind of like a it's miniature big. game? Okay. Yeah, it, cool. it's, it's, it's you true. Need, Jim for the hall. Yeah, yeah it, exactly. it's written for it. It's pretty cool. So, did you? Yep. 
did you wander away from gaming at any point? I mean, how long did you, if you did, how long was the stint that you were away? Not really. It just kind of simmered down, you know, once you're, you know, starting family and stuff like that, obviously <laughs> time disappears very quickly. Yeah. Um, but I, I still had everything. I didn't sell anything. I didn't get rid of any, well, I did sell a few that I didn't really like, but you know, I kept the core ones that I wanted and, um, kept them along for forever and, uh, actually added some like in the, it, that was around the mid nineties or so. Um, but actually at that point I picked up, um, Avalon Hills devil's den. That's another great one that I love. Um, hmm. cause it's, it's, it's one of the only ACW games that I found that goes below a regiment level that I like, you know, other people didn't like it cause it was, it was too crunchy, but I liked it because it was, it's almost like squad leader for, you know, ACW. Um, Did, so I picked that one up, played that a little bit. Has that one um, been redone or made into a new series or anything? No, actually, Avalon Hill picked it up from Battleline. Battleline, yeah, Battleline, and they actually did the redo. the The Avalon mm -hmm. Hill version was a redo of the uh, the Battleline version. Uh, Wait, which, on what, that. Some people, I, I, I talked with a few people about it. Some people like the old version. Devil's Den. Talking about? That's uh, Devil's Den. Oh, de okay, Devil's Den. All right, okay. I don't know why I didn't hear that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so okay. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I cut out there. No. Somewhere in here, you uh, well, you didn't go away from it, but you transitioned to different games yep. as per your YouTube channel says so. What uh, what happened? I mean, where did uh, did, did you just sort of yep. fall into all these things, like kind of like I did? That wow, where were these at? Yeah, yeah, no. Well, I mean, of course, late, you know, you get into late 90s, 2000s, you know, demise of Avalon Hill and everything like that. Um, and actually, coincidentally, that's when my son was, you know, getting of the age. He was getting around 10, 12, 13 range to start, you know, playing some of them with him. So I actually started him out on some of them, tried some of the some of them as well, because I had. I had uh, the original Battle Cry, you know, speaking of Hasbro <laughs> these days, I had mm -hmm. the uh, Battle Cry version and got him into playing that with kind of miniature type of stuff with that and eventually like memoir and other things. So that that kind of, you know, helped kind of spark it back uh, uh, in there as well. Um, and then bigger thing was, you know, Internet, you know coming mid to late 2000s, mm -hmm. um, getting on there and actually hooking up with some other guys. And that gets into Panzer Grenadier range and uh, that game over there. We, uh, I hooked up with them, some guys over in Europe and over here in the U.S. as well and basically got into Panzer Grenadier and really played the heck out of it just like squad leader uh, years ago. And um, got into playing that actually, actually to the point of <laughs> burning out <laughs> eventually. Oh, really? Uh, a number of years ago. But then, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I I played I've played probably with that probably well over three hundred or so games scenarios. Wow, um, that's a lot. Wow, nice. series. And uh, yeah, well. We still a lot of players out there. I don't know if you've if you've played it or you've seen it or or anything with with that. But I got hooked up with um, uh, Panzer HQ, uh, which mm -hmm. is that website. It's a good website. Um, out there that has all the stuff out there. Yeah, it really is. And another guy, Andrew. Um, what was his name? I can't think of it now. Uh, he put it all together back in the day, and you know we got we helped out by loading data and stuff like that on there. Good IT work. And, um, yeah. you know, helped out with that quite a bit. But, you know, it was getting to the point that it was kind of like, oh, there's all this other stuff out here, too. <laughs> Plus, yeah. I wanted to get back into my ACW stuff. I had done a lot, you know, back in the day with that. I heard you mention Europe.
Yep. Yep. Yeah. A lot of guys over there. England. England is a big. A lot Were of guys you stationed over there, over there or <laughs> you just had contacts? Play, play games. No, I just had contacts. I just had contacts okay, okay, over okay. there. And, you know, you meet one person and leads to another person and leads to another person and, and everything else. Actually, they still, still have a, um, a uh, uh, mini tournament, kind of a friendly tournament game we do with uh command and colors uh these days oh. where we play everybody plays like once a month um as part of a tournament um and man i tell you yeah, that's a brutal game and they are brutal players <laughs> oh <laughs> they really play the napoleonics seriously over there huh oh yeah Talk. oh yeah it's a matter of you can put yourself down you know six, six banners to one <laughs> <laughs> Todd's top shelf there is now stacked with <laughs> the Napoleon. In the map, there are minutes. <laughs> I've uh, never, I never got into that system, but I'm uh, waiting. It's good, but it's a lot, a lot of fun. They're, they're... Yeah, you're chopping up on us bad now. Jeff's looking forward to getting into uh, Commanding Colors Napoleonics in the next three to six months. Oh. Yeah, there's a leasing. There's a le Yeah, you're you you got a real big delay. Should he uh, jump off and get back in? Yeah. Try leaving the studio and coming back in, Alan. Yeah, because now he's locked up. <laughs> okay. So anyway, uh, I just got some new Napoleonics in. <laughs> Speaking of. Oh, we're zoomed in. Yeah, is that the picture's good? Yeah, the picture's, the picture's gorgeous. Great. Cam Sawyer is a beautiful man. <laughs> Can you hear us okay? No, he's lost. <laughs> <laughs> Toddy, what what Napoleonics did you get in? More community colors? Yeah. Okay. I got. Uh... There we go. You gotta try stopping the camera. Can you hear me with it? Can hear you just fine. Sounds clear, yeah. Is the delay better? Hmm. We're having fun too, Charles. Yep. <laughs> well, that's what live is. Hey, can uh, you hear us okay? Better. Can you hear me now? There we go. Can you hear me now? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's definitely a little, a little better. better. Well, we'll see if there's a delay. Um. So real quick, while we're kind of getting that result... I got uh, Epic, Napoleonics, <laughs> and uh, uh, the Generals and Tacticians uh, expansion. Play the, and the Generals. Yeah, but... Generals and Tacticians is the one missing some parts, so I got to reach out to Noble Knight. And I got Prussia. And Prussia, the new printing, is already out of stock at, at GMT and everywhere. I luckily found it at a store. I ran some random online guy out of, out of van down by a river, but... So hopefully I'll have the whole set here soon. And yeah, Hexy, you can look forward to that in about six months. Six months? I need to clear some shelf space then. Yeah, you'll need to clear some space. <laughs> Did you find that at the game store you guys went to in Minnesota or Montana or wherever you went to? They did have, actually, they did have it, but I wasn't about to lug that thing back. It's super heavy. It's like blocks and stuff. So I thought, no, I'll just order. You hear that, Jeff? Todd loves to go to game stores in Minnesota and montana and idaho but oh, yeah, i try yeah. and get him to go to game night five minutes from his house and <clears throat> <clears throat> uh, we're letting uh camp sawyer here recycle hopefully he gets yeah. that uh meanwhile Ron Howard. Howard. so you want to high flute and right, oh wait we got Hold we got on. two instances here let's remove two instances yeah all right hold on. let's add that one let's remove this one oh, yeah there. sorry I, I, yeah Something oh, crashed go. on here, but now I've. Is that better? Can you hear me? Hear me now? Yeah, that yeah. one's definitely. Let me get rid of that. Big thing about okay. colors, Well, I figured out what it was. Uh, when... yeah. Go for it. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, sorry about that. I, I figured out what it was. Good old uh, Windows decided to do an update right in the middle of this. So. <laughs> <laughs> I killed it. So we're <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because now you're in sync. When you talk, your voice is moving or your mouth's moving at the same time the words are coming out. So that's yep. good. 
All right. So, I, okay. So yep. we were, we were anyway. talking about you when you transitioned away or not away from, but into the new stuff. So when the new companies came into the world for you to play, what was the first game or the first company past Avalon Hill that you really liked? Ah, uh, first one that I liked. Um, hmm, good question. Good question. Um, it's tough to say because I, I, I got in, like I said, got in been playing the heck out of Panzer Grenadier and that I was really into into that most of the time. I was kind of following like GMT um mainly because of of uh you know their redo of GBACW um because they have all of those from the originals. So I was kind of following that and I kind of picked those up slowly but surely um a little bit later on. And it was it was a little bit tough to get the secondary market at that point because it was all eBay and all that kind of fun stuff. But right. But it was probably GMT first coming off of there, and then kind of rolling into like uh, like Revolution Games as well with their ACW stuff. You know the Blind Swords and you know Black Swan stuff that's going on these days. Um, yeah, really really good stuff. I was really surprised how good that was. Um, and then I look back at like the old SPI stuff, uh, you know, terrible Swift sword and all that stuff. And I'm kind of like, Oh, I really like this, but man, the graphics and the detail and everything else on the new stuff just draws me right in. It's like, you know, they've hooked me with the eye candy, you know, it's, it's like, <laughs> I'm hooked. You know, I go back what? and play the other one. Cause I was actually playing, uh, uh, what was it? Mansfield. And I was like, oh, these graphics are okay, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, yeah do definitely, <laughs> definitely. I mean, somewhere, I, who knows where it happened, but yeah. somewhere. So I, like, uh, designers got really, really talented. So. Yeah, I, I saw you, you played Three Days of Gettysburg oh, yeah. on your channel. Yep. Did you get there's, in on the re really reboot of that? Yeah. Sorry, you cut out there, McMurray. Oh, sorry, buddy. Um, no, I was just saying I saw that you uh, have played through, <clears throat> excuse me, Three Days of Gettysburg on your channel. Are you going to get in on the reboot on that? Maybe get the yep. best of both those worlds, older game, newer, some newer design and all that stuff? Oh, yeah. Nice. Oh, yeah. Nice. And the second part Yeah, of that I, is, I do want to get that because uh, uh, one area... Yeah. No, keep going. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's getting a delay. Yeah, he's getting a delay from us to him. Oh, this the second part of that is when yeah, do we get to see an outstanding here. series of uh, a most fearful sacrifice? Because yeah. that's going to be awesome. Oh man, I'm butchering this. I'm sorry, guys. No, no, no. Yeah, I'm getting a wicked it's delay the, from the computer delay. It's not anything. Yeah, else. No, that's I like the questions. <laughs> yeah, they're on topic and not about body parts. And yeah, stuff. yeah. <laughs> yes, you're right, Mike. His virus checker is probably going now. I mean, the base. Yes, definitely. <laughs> definitely getting the new three days. Uh, that's nice. that's that was. To put on there because I do want to get the updates and I, I definitely want to see you know what they're doing for the first day, um, you know mm -hmm. that whole first day piece of something that's you know under gamed, and you know needs <sighs> needs more to it, and if they can do stuff particularly with the you know meeting engagement piece of it, um, I think that'll be I think that'll be great, and I'm really looking forward to it. Well, I do know, I can tell you this, that Dick Whitaker, I watched him for two days up there, him and a friend. All they did was play the first day with Buford and Heath and adding uh, Vedette rules for the cavalry. And yeah. 
that's all they played. So the, the only scenario they played, and they played it over and over and over again to try to get it. And and I'm assuming that he's he's pretty much got that tied down because I mean they pushed that thing right to pre-order or like shortly after the mm-hmm. Gettysburg thing. So I, I'm pumped. I, I'm so pumped for that. I ordered two copies of it. So I oh yeah, for that thing. Now you you were talking yep. blind swords and everything else, and I know in the back of McMurray's head is going crazy with uh, he's got to have some questions back there that'll come out here in a minute because well he, the, the, the big one was just when can we hope to see one of your fantastic <laughs> intro video and then you know chunk of turns chunk of turns chunk of turns chunk of turns and and get it done for a most fearful sacrifice because that'd be badass I'd be over the moon with that that'd be outstanding. Um, slash. <laughs> Actually, I, I've, had, I've had that. I've had. No, I've got most fearful. I have it. I've, I've actually have it. I had the first edition and actually got the update to it. But believe it or not, I didn't get to play it until two weeks ago when I went to uh, went to a group. So I was for. I've had it for like a year and a half, however long it's been out. But I haven't uh-huh. gotten it to the table. And I finally, I finally did get it to the table. I, you know, it's great. I really, really love it. In fact, one of the things I'm doing, uh, cause I'm going to have a flurry of videos coming out. You may have noticed I haven't been putting out a lot of videos. I've got a bunch coming out here for my 18, for, for my 160th, 1864. And, you know, right now, this point in time, everything starts. Yeah. You know, we've got Overland and Shenandoah uh, and the Atlanta campaign. And I, I originally had the thought of doing all three of them and just pumping out videos. And then reality set in oh. <laughs> where I can't get all three campaigns going and I'm going to have to pick. So I, I've got a bunch load on Shenandoah. So speaking of, you know, where heck, XX is all the Shenandoahs starting right from New Market down through Piedmont. Um, cool Springs, even wrapping in early stuff when he raided the uh, raided DC. Uh, but I'm using the blind sword system. And this is where I was getting to it because somebody on B, um, Board Game Geek, I can't remember who it is now, actually made cards to replace the chits on um, the Kernstown version. So I've actually printed, I actually this evening, I just, just printed those out. I'm going to cut them out, mount them and everything, and use the cards instead of the chits, much like you can do with uh, a most fearful sacrifice and see how that works as well. Oh, really? So huh. that's so coming out order, as well. So I, order, I'm, I'm very spin. impressed with it. Yeah, I'm very impressed with so Nordic Maelstrom oh, hey, Nordic. About which is better game three days of Gettysburg and most fearful sacrifice. Now I'm going to let you answer this, but I'm going to say, Nord, you're talking, these are two different tiers of games. If you want depth and detail, you want three dog. If you want ease of play and very good play, you want to play AMFS. I mean, they're they're the, These games, gorgeous, absolutely wonderful games. Either one's fun to play. They're just two sides of the spectrum. <laughs> Do you find that with that, you know, comparing three dog to black swan, which I guess Chickamauga is the next one we're going to see. Uh, do you find that comparison the same where it's just more detailed on the GBACW side and a little easier playing on the black swan side? Yeah, I mean it. It is. You're exactly right, Hex. It's it is apples and oranges to some degree. I mean, you've got great detail with uh, Three Dog, and you know a lot of you know stuff that you can actually walk the battlefield and 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 look at the monuments and say, hey, I know that counter. <laughs> you know, I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah that stuff i know this this 
predict. You can do the same with with um, most fearful, the most fearful sacrifice. But the mechanics of the most fearful sacrifice are are simpler and more game worthy. I would say, uh, meaning you know, if you're playing this at a game night or convention or whatever, uh, you know, it's something you can finish in the time span. I mean, three dog, three dog, you can as well, but you know, there's a lot of detail to it. I mean, you got to ponder over how you're going to move those regiments and how you're going to, you know, get the full division in there and, you know, do all the mechanics in there, which, you know, I love that piece of it too, because that's all important stuff as well, where in a most fearful sacrifice, you know, you're more relying upon the cards and the, the, uh, and reacting to that to make sure your plan of attack works or doesn't <laughs> if you're the defender. So yeah, it is two different two different things um, in there. Yeah, they they both have a different approach on battlefield confusion and the ability to get things done. Todd, was there who was asking? What was Richard asking? Oh uh, well, Richard yep. asked if if you play exactly. the exactly. gamers gamers games like uh, in their quiet fields. I guess is one or maybe Bloody Roads. I don't know if those are. But do you play any of the gamers games on say Civil War maybe or any of them? The battle. Any of the yeah, like line of battle and stuff. Them. Yes, I, I have played them. Exactly. Yep. I have I have played those before, and actually for my Shenandoah videos, they're going to be coming out for Early's campaign. While I picked that one up, and I'm actually learning. That's on that's on my other table, in the other room right now. Um, probably going to do the video on that because I liked, I've, I've seen some on that. In fact, I think Cax, you did one on that, didn't you? To take Washington. Yeah. The, yeah. I'm LOB and me are not good friends. <laughs> <laughs> but I haven't thrown them out yet. <clears throat> I know writing down the rules is a little, it, it's a little bit much, but I, yeah, I don't mind the detail. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's you know, I, uh, yeah. Nick Rosser told me that I. Well, then the the, the other one, the other one for. Yeah. Jesus Christ, Mike. Forty-one. What, uh, great battles. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, no. Uh, me and Mike just told us that he has forty-one games that are specifically on Gettysburg. God damn, Mike. <laughs> Whew. Get after it, buddy. Now, the line of battle. Um, <laughs> I don't know uh, 41 Gettysburg games. I was told that I started with the wrong game, that I should have played <clears throat> the last chance or I should have played the Antietam one. So I, I will go back one day to them and try them, but uh, I'm, not, I'm not. Yeah, John, I have all of the CWBS games, so and I do like them. I, I like the command rules, and I think, I think they're, they're pretty awesome, so. Do you have any of the CWBS stuff, Alan? No, I don't have any of I don't have any of that. I just have the the um, the uh, uh, to take Washington. That's what I'm thinking. Of. Mm. So you just have the line of battle. I think it's the line of battle, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. if you ever come across, so I can I UBS came up, you know, I came up the great battles, you know. What do we got? We got about a six, seven second delay. Yeah. <laughs> um. Oh, all right. there we go. So it, it has it back. Yeah, this is this is the delay. All right. So I'm, I'm going to ask a question here, and, and it's kind of long, so. So you, you you focus on you you definitely focus on ACW. You played Panzer Grenadier till you burnt out like three hundred games, which is incredible. Three hundred games of one game is a lot. That's pretty cool. But um, so you really seem to focus on a game. Like you focus a lot on Panzer. You focus a lot on the GBA GBACW, and it looks like Blind Sword. Mm -hmm. Are you concerned about burning out on any of those, or or do you like the topic more for like ACW that you're not going to burn out? I'm curious because I love it how you focus. So, yeah, 
with with ACW, that's always going to be something that I love. I was I was into ACW even before I was into gaming. Um, I go back to having the marks. You know, remember the marks play sets? You know, the background play sets and the Antietam play sets and Gettysburg play sets from marks. I go back to those days as well. So I've ACW is in my blood. It'll ne- never go away. That's harder to burn out from. Uh, you know, different time frames or different, you know, campaigns and things like that. I could probably burn off from burn out from. So that's why I like jumping around to like Panzer, even like I'm, I'm loving watching you guys play squad, uh, advanced squad leader, you know, the starter kits there. It's mm-hmm. making me want to jump back in there and I've got to say, get the videos done first and then you can get back into that stuff. Um, <laughs> and then kind of go from there. And, uh, yeah, because I've got a lot of games out here, a lot of games, <laughs> and as I look over to part of my collection, uh, that I'm like, yeah, I'd love to get on there, but I've got to like stay focused, stay to topic, everything else, because it's so easy to get off topic. Um, very easy. In fact, I've, part of me is is with the with this. Um, Shenandoah campaign have, have kind of got off topic as well because I I uh, started doing some historical research purely by accident a number of years ago as well. And it ties into pretty much the whole Death Valley, um, Kernstown campaign because there's one union unit in there that actually had a good many uh, companies of men from where I live. So there's a lot of history right here on them. Um, and I'm digging up more and more. So I'm, there you go. There you go. You're going to do that one yeah. for the 80th. <laughs> I, I would love to. I just, that's a, that's a tall order, but we'll see. 80th is coming up. It's a good game for it. I know. I know. It would be really awesome. I saw that. I saw your video on it. It looks great. Yeah. Yeah. I'm. I should. I should give. I got a lot of ASL guys here in St. Louis. I should recruit at least one to help me play through it. You know, help it play through a couple scenarios, just to try it out. Hey. Uh, yeah. Someone said you've been quiet, McMurray. You got any questions for Kent? Oh yeah. Yeah. It looks. It looks. I mean, great. I it just. I, we talked about. Um. We talked about uh, about uh, like blind swords, um, as well as black swan. That's a that was a big one that was on my mind. We covered, we touched on wooden ships, iron men, and uh, flying colors. I'm a big fan of flying colors. Flying colors is probably the number one game that got me bad. That got me, you know, as an adult playing hex encounter games um, on a serious level. Yep. Um, so that one's outstanding big fan do you play any of the expansions for uh uh flying colors yeah i i've got the expansions for those yes nice yeah i picked up the latest the latest one there uh what was it it's down here it's the south america one can't see it now at the moment but yeah is it it under southern cross yeah south yeah it's uh it's under the southern cross Yep, I'm seeing it now under Southern Cross. It's down there on the bottom shelf. It's a, it's another one I want to want to get up there, as well as well as I hit, I do have have you uh, I haven't tried it yet. I've seen it. Is Captain C? Um, Captain I C. It's, it. it's another one by Mike Nagel, but I think it's a Worthington. Yeah, see it, it down there. Yeah, it's a Worthington. Cool. That came out recently, didn't it? In the last year or so, maybe? Yeah, maybe five years ago, give or take, four years ago. Okay, maybe I'm thinking of something else. No, yeah, no, it, it, it's been a few years. It. It's been a couple years. Yeah. Okay. I have not messed with it, no. What's, it's, what's the... It's more individual ship. Yeah, it's more individual ship to ship. Okay. Outstanding. So you're it's... playing a captain of... A frigate or a captain of a ship of the line squaring off against another captain. 
No, the Meandering it's, Mike's uh, got it. It's Legion. Legion, there you go. Is that the one that's got like a, a kind of a close up of a, a ship to ship duel on the front of it? It's like a blue toned box. Um, I'm trying to think some of my phone right now. Um, if I go and try and look it up, it'll. Yeah, hold on. Hold, on give me one second. My man. I keep forgetting we can do this. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, hey, yeah, while he's out, Jeff, I just asked you, someone asked to see what's in Epic. Do you think I think the, can... the big thing with Epic is it allows you to link up two, like, mats. Yeah, okay. Yeah, Captain C. Okay. I have not played it. I have not played it. I like that um, cup. I like that box. I like, box art looks cool. Accurate. It's a shame yeah. it's played on water. Yep. Shut up, Jeff. <laughs> that's So that, that strikes me as... Um, so, like, I run into this with... Uh, Hex Encounter War Games as we get, you know, as smaller in, in scope of game, right? Um, like, I tend to play a lot of Hex Encounter stuff that I can play big engagements, right? Or large campaigns and whatnot. Because I do, I do enjoy miniature gaming, and so that's where, like, I'm not going to necessarily play Squad Leader. I might play, you know, uh, Chain of Command with Todd or Bolt Action or some such like that. Um, and that I feel like the captain's C itch is probably yep. scratched for me with um, post captain from old dominion maybe. Um, but there's a couple, a couple, you know, uh, mm. crunchier for the lack of better word, uh, miniatures games out there where you're dealing with stuff like crew allocation and um, everything else. Which, yeah. That being said, mm -hmm. Putting Napoleonic airships together, painting. That's them like going back up. to the old. There was an old SPI. Frigate. Frigate. Yeah. It was yeah. an old yeah, SPI like frigate. that. It wasn't. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah, frigates over yeah. there. Yeah, I, I, I. That's so. Oh, that's going back a long time ago. So. It's on the list. Yeah, it's on the short list. I don't. I There's don't have that one. I, I saw it though. Year. Oh boy, that's going back years ago. Yeah. I might have two copies yeah. of that in all honesty. Yeah. I feel like I have like a magazine version maybe and then a flat pack. There's a question for you from Richard Chipman. Damn. Very good question yeah. from Richard. Oh, there we go. Ooh, good question. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> all of them. Yeah, that was easy. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, everything except for core level, like C3 eyes. I will, I will take if it's a good if it's a good game, I will take I will take all of them. But if I pick one, if I have to pick one, it would be regiment level. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to agree with you yeah, on that. I just, I just like that detail. Yep. GBACW exactly. is still my golden goose. Yeah. It's the, I think it's the greatest system in a game ever made. But the operational series from MMP that Todd and I are playing, which hopefully we're going to do that again this weekend, the GCACW is also phenomenal. But yes, tactical Good. red level, love it. I don't even I don't even dislike the demi brigade type games like CWBS or uh, the mo a most fearful sacrifice, the Black Swan system, mm -hmm. uh, the uh, Blind Swords. I, those are all fine too. But boy, give me GBA CW every time. Yeah, Blind happy. Swords is regimental. Yeah, I'm, yeah, Blind yeah. Blind Swords. Yeah, it's full. Yep. Bl Blind, yeah, Blind Swords is regimental. It's once you reach up into black swan that you hit the demi brigades yeah okay yeah blind swords is just my yep. happy it's, happy it's residential it's, it's regimental here we go yep there you go there you there go that's oh, right yeah oh, why wait hey, aren't you test playing something right now um yes kind of sort of uh i i, I oh Oh, people, some testing. <laughs> I am because I hooked up with uh, I hooked up with Bill Byrne. Um, I've played a few GBACWs with him, and uh, getting some of the other GBACWs that are coming down the line going as well. Um, so there's there's good stuff coming on here. The the uh, update to um, uh, was a gleam of bayonets. That is oh yeah going to yeah. be phenomenal when that comes out that's long over it's it's yeah it's it's just 
Yeah. Well, it, and it's going to be worth the wait from what I've seen so, so far. It's, which one? it's which really one? good. You know, the remake of a group you're going to be able to basically take those maps with you. Uh, oh, you got well, it there. Yeah, I don't have it. It's in, uh, that's up in my other room of games. Hey, I'm I'm curious. I I got yep. the um, I don't know where I saw it, but I saw. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Jeff. Look, you tell that game's old. I got my name and last four go. on that thing. Yep. <laughs> That's uh, everybody. That's uh, five 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 nine eight one seven. Um, hey, I, I just was reading on the GMT update or something. I don't know if it's coming with the new three dog, but someone said a a fifteen page GBACW uh, rule set, simpler GBACW. Have you? you we know, talked about that with Stigler. Oh, we did. I don't... Yeah, it got poo pooed real, real, real hard. See you guys later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nord, uh, I have not played under a Southern Cross yet. If uh, the only small ship action for flying colors that I've got is Serpent of the Seas, thanks to yeah. this guy over here. Yeah. Aww. Thanks to this Dick. Is a Dick Whitaker's a big proponent on that, and I I'll agree with Dick. I mean, if it'll get people into playing the system. Awesome. That's great. But it's not the system, Jeff. Right. Oh, no. That's just... <laughs> I mean, uh... Stigler's gonna do that with his stuff. Stigler's gonna do that with his stuff. <laughs> I'm so I can't I wish to, I'm glad they're moving his game along finally. I'm glad that uh, yes. um uh what's his name finish the maps. Oh come a on. Scoop? Not Kibler. a scoop. Kibler. Oh, Kibler, yeah. Yeah. Uh um, I mean, Kibler, I, yeah, I gotta tell you on that Kibler, last. Yeah. Oh yeah, sorry. On that last update, I'm telling you, man, I was tempted on that three dog. I'm like, that is so amazing looking. <laughs> I don't uh, even. I bought two. Yeah, you just glossed straight I bought through two, the most fearful sacrifice. Yeah. What, McGrory? Yeah, it's gonna be I good. Said, yeah, well, I'm waiting. I, I was disappointed two. because, of course, two weeks. Man, two weeks is is you know wilderness one sixty. I was looking to get the new GBACW for Wilderness. I, I, I you know, but I can't. That's okay. I can't, I can't test play mine I'm doing anymore. The, I'm doing the Shenandoah instead. I can't test play mine anymore because they changed the counters and they changed the the some of well, not the map so much, but they changed the counters, and I am not rebuilding and recreating those counters all over again. I played like five scenarios in it. It's going to be phenomenal. And my only fear oh, is yeah. that Line of Battle puts theirs out before GBACW. Mm. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay, well, here's a question then. Is is the blind sword system basically <laughs> a light version of GBACW because it's the same scale but it's a little bit easier? I don't know if it's a light version. It might just be a lighter way to look at some of the same engagements. Um, that's what I mean. No, I wouldn't say it's light. I wouldn't. I don't mean it's the same. I just mean it's a light, yeah. scale, lighter for that yeah. scale. I mean, you're you're. Yes, I mean you don't you don't have all the need to worry about pos positioning your regiments exactly in one direction. You know. Right. Okay. But you do need to worry about, you know, what your opponent is going to do to you with the next chit pull or something like that. Um, so it's more focused at a game level than it is focused at a simulation level. So I think GBACW, uh, yeah, GBACW is more a simulation where you're looking at what's actually happened at Gettysburg or wherever. Whereas Blind Swords, it's a game that you're playing and you've got to react back and forth to your opponent. Um, but it works solo good as well because you're again, a chit pull type of mechanic. So it really works out quite well. Um, I've had some great games. Those latest ones that they've come out with, um, what was it? Greater, greater victory, something like that uh, about South mountain. I think that's great. The Perryville one, a grand havoc, 
that if, if you don't have it, that is great because that really shows what Perryville was all about. Um, and I really love that one. Of course, I love Perryville anyways, because it's a great, great field uh, to go to and uh, and see. But the game is is really good. So, yeah, they're they're just getting better. And, you know, I just look at it because that was the, they're the building blocks to what a most fearful sacrifice has become. You know, Herman right. used all that experience to get them to get them to there. Yeah. And, and with that system, you know, with Herman allowing other people to create games off of that system. You watch, you give it, you, I give it five years and every battle during the eight, during the American civil war is liable to be produced into a game using that system. Yeah. Oh yeah. I agree. Yeah. 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 Well, we know GBACW, we know that the crew is working. Yeah, it's, all, it's all good. They're working on a bunch of different, we know that they're working on the trans Mississippi stuff. Um, we know that uh, a gleam of bayonets is being worked on. We know three dog, yep. a new version is coming. Um, I'm also understanding that. Well, I know for facts, I've already seen the map. Is that um, um, the Chickamauga game? Was that River of Death? That's being. I don't know when the, if that's going to pop anytime soon. But that was do, there was some rework on that. Yep, and. I think the Trans Mississippi one's going to be interesting. I'm I'm really kind of looking forward to whatever that one gets. It, I you know I know that Dick offered um, uh, Dick Volers and um, Al Smith a print offer for Wilderness, a time frame, and the both of them refused it because they want the game to be perfect. So that thing's pushed another year to a year and a half. Well, from back in Gettysburg, it's pushed another year, year and a half away. But that um, that you you want right. you want a regimental game of the Civil War that's going to cause you headaches. That's going to be the one. Not Gettysburg seventy seven <laughs> advanced. I thought that caused you more headaches yeah. at a regimental level than anything else. That was a different sort of headache. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> <all right>. <laughs> <laughs> but I still think there's a good game in that box. I, really I give him credit for playing that because game. I tried that. <laughs> Didn't make it past the first two hours. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're gonna have a guy on here soon that's uh, a rock star. We're yeah. gonna have SPQR on here, and he's real. That's really the only game that he's dabbling in. Um, he just wants to master it, and uh, we're gonna get him. Plus, he does some modeling, ship modeling and stuff. We're gonna it's get like him on here and chit chat with him. Dabbling in freebase and cocaine, you know, yeah, dabbling. We got it all in on that. that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so our crowd out there, our wonderful audience, yeah, <laughs> stuff that's good, that's good, that's good. Um, yeah, Chuck Line of Battle is multi man, uh, that's their big uh yeah, tactical yeah. level Civil War stuff. Uh, Mike, nice comment about the rules for GBACW, the NSGBACW, we like that. Um, okay, so we've talked. We've looked. These guys I know have crammed in a bunch of stuff off your channel to see what you're interested in, and I'm scrolling. I was scrolling through here, and I think the one thing that I did not see, interestingly enough, I, mean, I could have overlooked it. I don't see any Napoleonic stuff in here. No. Nope. Why not? Uh you're probably right. You're probably right. Even though that I've even though that I've done some Napoleonics. Like I said, I mean, it basically was, you know, more with the guys over in Europe playing commanding colors, uh, but also getting into, and this is related to, to um, GBACW indirectly, is I don't know if you ever were, ever, ever saw Joie de Glory, which uh -huh. is the glory system, which was the brigade level, brigade, demi-brigade oh. level stuff that was Napoleonic's. Um, it's, it's really high level stuff. There was actually, there was an issue of C3I. They published, um, I forget what the battle is now, right outside of Paris. What is that? Anyways, they published one of the scenarios in there at one point, but it's all, um, it's all over in, um, France that, uh, Pascal, 
Pavel. I can't remember his last name to save my life at the moment. Uh, if you can tell, I'm bad with names. But uh, he produced all of those, and we got into those quite a bit. And that's kind of fun because that's a quick play as well. Uh, it's a very uh, fast play. You know, if you played any of the Glory stuff, you know, Glory 1, Glory 2, and Glory 3, um, that was uh, that's the kind of same style that's in there. Except they added really? more cavalry charges and, you know, all the European stuff in there. Yeah. Well, the, no. the glory system. Oh, good is stuff. I got to hear. Glory oh, it's trapped behind yeah, everything. Yeah. Yep. And they, they basically took that and just made it European. Okay. So you've got more Invert. cavalry charges. You know, you got heavy versus light. And Bird didn't have his hands in helping with that. And, you know, well, he kind of blessed it back in the day. He kind of let them, you know, take the core rules and modify it to what, you know, they wanted. And it worked out, it works out pretty well. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a fun, quick play game, you know, quick meaning played over a, uh, from right. top to bottom. Um, some of the scenarios are better than others. You know, some of the scenarios could have been designed a little bit better. You know, they went historical uh, rather than balanced. Um, but it's a good system. The maps, all the quality of stuff is is good. You're dealing with, you know, the French banners and, you know, the uh, uh, all the coat of arms for the French units and everything like that. So okay, uh, that's fun. But I never got into the other... The other stuff, other than what SPI had back in the days. Right. What's the next monster that's going to hit your table? Other than Jeff's mom. Ooh. Next monster. <laughs> well, the, it, define monster because they don't have a big table. Um, first off, I've got well, tables. I've got plural tables. Um, two maps are bigger. Just say one of the big flying color scenarios to mess with them. <laughs> 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 I would I would love to get uh you know Gettysburg out there again. I I actually I'd love to get um a most fearful sacrifice that I played it once, you know, one of the smaller scenarios going with some of the bigger scenarios, but that game is just so big, you know. I need like all my tables in one room uh to put everything together for it. Um, and I'd love to get that one out, but uh, I don't know if I'll ever get the, all the tables in one space to do that. There you go. There's a question. Uh, yes, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I, if you see my channel, I'm actually into other stuff. I've got like Panzer stuff out there. I got a lot of Panzer stuff because I got into that one. I actually got back and got into that one back with the Avalon Hill, uh, your Quinto days of uh, MBT and 88 and all the other ones that were the predecessors to that. So I got back into that. So I do have all of those. I've got a number of videos out on those. Um, a lot of World War II stuff, uh, as I said um in there as well also getting into some of modern stuff as well i have some of the old spi modern um stuff and i'm actually really interested in there's a um there's one coming out i can't remember the title it's a gb uh, it's a um gmt game it's a mo modern tactical hold on here let me see if i can find it real quick uh but I am into that stuff as well. Pretty much anything, any period of time, because I do have all the old stuff as well, the ancients um, with that, uh, actually the old SPI uh, pre-stag stuff uh, back in the day. Played that a lot. We had we had a lot of fun just slamming counters together with that. And wound up, <laughs> you start out with, I don't know, 20, 30 counters, and you wind up with three by the end. 
basically a, a game of last game man standing. Um, and or pretty much anything, pieces. you know. It ACW really just hits the hits something that I'll never give up. I do have a bunch of pre- or a few of the press tag games. Yeah, Jeff. That being said, I think honestly, I like I have Yeoman, but I I think great medieval battles or whatever that I played a few of on, I think your channel, Jeff, I like that. That system is outstanding. Mm -hmm. I'm really sad. There's only like five games in it. Um, I had that quad pack. I think then there's like a King Arthur one. That's uh, a a slightly more weird fantasy version. Either way that, that system I really enjoyed. I'm sad that there's only, you know, as per usual, I play games that are older than I am and then I enjoy them and there's no support. There's no more in a series, anything like that. I'm the same way, right. Nord. I had, um, right. I remember going to Manassas, right. of course, I went to school down there. Yeah, I mean, all the we didn't have support back then either. <laughs> That's fair. The SBI stuff, we were playing fair as is because there was no internet. <laughs> yeah. Jeff, the difference is you went so to we were Manassas, making stuff up, like, you know, and watched it. We had light cavalry running over everybody. Hell yeah. I was only in the second one, Andrew. Oh, sorry. I was too young for the one that you're. <laughs> yeah, you couldn't get your mom to sign the permission slip. I was the there. Person. I was there. Yeah. <laughs> you're like that's gonna happen, Clay. What is last? I was like Patton. You know, I was there at the battle. Yeah. yeah. There you go. <laughs> Good reference. <laughs> <Outstanding>. <laughs> Yeah, 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 camp yeah. is the game you're thinking of from GMT. Decisive action. <laughs> That's the modern one. Yes, thank you, thank you. I watched a couple of videos on that. Looks, uh, looks interesting. You know, for modern, <laughs> a- you know, modern warfare. We're talking really, really modern stuff because they're talking. You know, when we were having Cold War stuff in the 80s, but this is doing stuff over in Poland and, you know, Eastern Europe. Scott pl- or Todd's played Ukraine 43, going to play Ukraine 23 next. Yeah. What? Yeah. It's, a, it's a 4X to 2X system, whatever. <laughs> you know, you remember Todd sent me that one game <laughs> at least, and I won't play it yet. Oh, God. <clears throat> Which one? Arden 44, the one that no, got the that middle. You didn't East, want, so you said to Middle Todd, Eastern Europe. Todd gave no. to me, then I gave back to Todd, then he said back to you, and now you just sold it. <laughs> Good lord. And I want to play that game, but it's only got like the game got thousand. passed around like a bong at Cheech Moran's house. Jesus Christ. Gee, Mike, only 38 Waterloo games? Slacking, yeah. buddy. <laughs> hey, um, 38, I'm, I'm that's not low. Yeah, I'm curious. I'm curious. Uh, camp, I like calling you camp. Uh, camp on Panzer. Do you like Panzer because it's like it's that's okay, like ASL but or squad leader, but much simpler? <laughs> I mean, I know it's got complexities, but well, I, I put it. I put it this way I like ASL if I'm in an infantry battle mood, you know, if I want to push around infantry units, I really like that. But Panzer for tanks, I just think is is better. You know, it gives more crunchy level of detail for it. You know, I play it full. Well, I've probably seen. I play it full bore uh, with all the advanced rules and everything else. And people say you're crazy. How you can do all that stuff? And it's like, no, it's easy. You just pick and choose. You know, it's, it's you don't have to play. You don't have to use all of them. You know, you can just pick and choose what you want. And actually, if you see, I'll I'll, I'll freely admit this on here. There's things that I'll miss, even though I'm playing it, I'll miss it. I'll forget an ammunition roll. And I'm like, oh, forget it. I missed yeah. the ammunition roll. And it was a critical, you know, critical moment. But yeah, you know, hey, it is what it is. But it's it it's just a lot of fun to to calculate that shot that's coming in that it, you know hits the turret at just the right angle and blows it off from a you know Panzer II against a you know KV KV one or something. Um you know it's 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 really fun. Uh, plus, it's yeah. it. I I feel it's once you master the rules, you got to take a little bit of time to master the rules. 
once you get it, it is a lot of fun because the command um, perspective to it is really good. We're using the chits to kind of say, this is what I'm going to do and you have to do it. And, you know, you get a, you get a good sense of, okay, I can either move, I can fire short halt. Um, it's great for setting up, you know, opportunity fire with the overwatch. Um, all that stuff is, is really good because you got to think about where you're going to place your units uh, ahead of time to, um, to make it happen. So yeah. it's, it, you know, yeah. it's, it's really good. And, and of course the latest one, North Africa is, is a monster, you know, the North Africa thing is, <laughs> I can't believe how much is in there. Um, yeah, that was impressive. It, that was impressive. And maybe not coming out of North Africa for anything else for a while. Clay's well, hitting him on the head tonight. The, la the last two North African games that we've seen, uh, NA41 and the one that, um, Todd, that you played from SCS, both of those two games had some serious detail when it came to supply, which makes sense for the desert. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we could all just yep. get with the operational campaign, campaign level. level. Yep. So I, I know you do some of your games on yep. Vassal and some, what some on the board. Some on the board. Which do you prefer, Vassal or on the board and shooting those videos? I like the cardboard. I, I've got to be I've got to be honest. I want the cardboard. I sit on the computer all day for work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's great. I mean, if I'm if I'm doing stuff like if I'm doing the pans or stuff and things like that, where there's a lot of counters, um, it's a little bit easier. But I'd rather put it on the table and get the cardboard out there and and push that around. Um, just a lot more fun. It's just, you know, you got the challenges of filming it and, and getting the right angles, the lighting, so forth and so on, that you don't have the challenge with um, with Vassal. You know, you just set it up and go, and uh, you're off and running. So, you know, I'd, I'd rather do the, the physical stuff because it's a, it's a lot more fun, particularly, you know, if you've played it face-to-face -face or conventions or whatever, you know, it's it's it's, it's all good. Mm -hmm. Um, what, I'm just curious why you started. And I do have you... North Africa 41. Hmm. Why'd you choose, want to start doing YouTube? I know it's just dead about a year ago. Oh yeah. Yeah. No. Cause I had, I had, you know, I've been on it for a while since, you know, pandemic and everything else going on. Cause there was mm -hmm. nothing else to watch on TV. <laughs> so I was watching the stuff and I'm kind of like, Oh, I've in prior career lives, I've done um, education, IT education, training, teaching, stuff like that. So I'm like, hey, this would be pretty fun. Plus, I did, and this is the hex will like this. Back of the pandemic, I set up uh, GBACW, Second Manassas, full game, and played it part of the pandemic. Biggest game I had on the table out here. Because I actually had to add, you know, piece of two by uh, piece of plywood on here to actually get it all set up there. Played it beginning to end with all the warts and all of the problems and things, things like that. And I was kind of like, I wish I filmed this because it would have been a great uh, yeah. video to put out there. Yeah, yeah. There's there's not much out there on that. I, I think I may have shot a couple items three years ago with that, but there's not a ton out there on that. Right. right. Quite frankly, I'm yeah, thinking just, the, the whole, the whole thing, it came out really good. It was somewhat historical. <laughs> I think we're the only two doing. Yeah. I've, I've, Stigler was doing some, but I haven't seen him. From... Yeah. I, I haven't seen anything. I haven't seen anything lately. I knew Stigler was doing some, but I haven't seen anything from him. Of course, he—I know he's busy. We know what he's doing. Uh, between Vassal say, and uh, uh, his his games coming out, he's pretty busy. So, yeah, I'm pumped for that. Even though it's going to be tiny, I think it's a, somebody. That's a great idea. What he did. Yep. Yep. Here, I'll throw out a controversial one. This is. Uh, 
Oh. This is one that'll cross everything. Maybe get maybe get Hexy into into uh, naval warfare. I don't know if come on, this no. One. I just got that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Hex. Hey, Hex, you want to go to my channel and start talking about something? Here, we'll just go. Come on, let's go. We were talking about that earlier. The guy I got it from liked All it right. so much he laminated the. <laughs> oh wow! Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's pretty cool where'd you get that we talked oh, wow. about that laminated and everything that. i wasn't listening um we were but no oh, jeez <laughs> why do i even talk to you god damn all right can you can nice. you i know hex doesn't i mean we want to learn well so what's up with iron and oak what is, what is that versus why is it different than flying colors what's up with that <laughs> Maybe they'll listen if you well, explain with, it. with that, it's like it's somewhat of a crossover stories. again with miniatures because it's hmm. <laughs> I, I look at it as kind of a crossover between miniatures and you know hex encounter games because it it kind of like kind of has the same feel of like a panzer where you're using the cards to represent your ships and you know you're have everything there you can substitute in you know real models if you're a model builder i'm i'm not uh but i might recruit my son uh to do it it's also got historical stuff because you are playing you know the naval battles either down the mississippi or around the coast or you know or you're chasing after the alabama um around the around the world so it's kind of fun it does have its detractors uh, there is there is a bit of randomness to the movement uh, that people didn't like, but that that can easily be you know easily be rectified. But once you get into battle, it's just like playing Monitor and Mary Mac, you know. I'm still trying to sell my <laughs> Ironclads game. I can't get no no takers on it. I've reduced the price. <laughs> Send it to us, Taxi. We'll burn it with some of the other games we're burning. <laughs> like Med War Sicily? That one deserves it. Hey, where is that thing now, anyhow? It's in my closet. House. I got it. <laughs> McMurray and I are going to burn it with cooked marshmallows and then go play uh, Most Fickerful Full Sacrifice this summer. It's sitting out <laughs> back at Todd's house just on top of the retaining wall. <laughs> just a nuclear option, huh? A nuclear yourself. option. <laughs> Yeah. Nord, we can absolutely play. Light a match and hold it over the board and let it go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, we're gonna we're gonna cook out while we play Most Fearful Sacrifice in July, wearing our wool, cooking rat over Medmore Sicily, <laughs> eating salt pork. Well, you know, it was you know the temperatures in Gettysburg in July of eighteen fifty three <laughs> were around a hundred. So I'm thinking maybe you should shut the garage door, put a heater in there, and play the game dressed oh, in wool. It'll be in St. Louis. Don't worry. It'll yeah, be we hot. don't need to do that in St. Louis. <laughs> yeah, it'll be hot enough. <laughs> no, hey, everybody, everybody that we get on, they all take a shot at me about Naval <laughs> War Day. So, hey, here's here's a question. I think I want to ask. You know, I think we kind of have said this, but <laughs> um, but we can ask everybody. And some people have been answering, but I'm kind of actually, I'm kind of curious on McMurray's answer on this. For you, not for me. I already answered the question. Spit I said, it out. I said GCACW and GTS. I'm telling you, GCACW has ruined me on all games because I was like looking at World War II games, going like, "What can I get that gives me the the thrills and chills of GCACW?" Is it because of that, or what you see Jeff doing when y'all <laughs> playing GCACW? Uh, it's when he wears his little his little you know tank tops and stuff when we are playing. That's why we don't film them because. <laughs> All he's doing is wearing a cartridge belt and a Kepi hat. Um, <laughs> but uh, anyway, let's get to the uh, question. Uh, uh, All right. Let's uh, answer the question. I think we know it. I think we've kind of figured it out, but go ahead. Left <laughs> turn. Yeah, get out your. Why don't you do that one, Camp? And I'll think here for a minute. Oh, favorite rule system? I. That's tough. I mean, that, that's a tough one. Because yes. I can, I can find fault with pretty much any rule system. I'll, I'll be honest. I, I, you know, I can be that the rules lawyer when needed. Hence, probably <laughs> why 
why he actually thought I was a lawyer. But uh, <laughs> there we go. Into the woods. <laughs> of all but, the GB, um, I mean, in terms of. Devil. Yeah. I mean, that one, that one's good. There's, there's a lot of detail to it. And I like that. Um, I don't know. I, I, I like what Herman's done with the blind sword system and black swan and the predecessors to that. Um, those are all pretty tight. I mean, yeah, there's little things here and there, but for the most part, it, it plays well. You know, I like GBACW too. You know, there's a lot to it and people have questions about it, but I, I think it's playable. I don't think it's, you know, crazy ridiculous like some people um, some people point out. Um, well, I think, you know, most of them I can, I can play through and, you know. With GCACW, I think Todd and I both found because Todd, what we played, we played ahead. three scenarios now. Mm-hmm. And we've gotten, and of course, Grant, I've played them before. And we've been playing them co-op. And I think with each scenario that we played, the games got more fluid each time. And if and we, we, we talk about it because we've had such a gap right now between when we've played and stopped. And we know that we need to get back to it. But I got a feeling that it'll just be we'll just be casually bumping the rule book when we come back to playing it again, just to, to get the little odd rules again. But I think our play of it's still going to be fluid all the way through. Now, as for starter kit, we my only, still my only problem with <laughs> no, I'm good. Uh, I, my only problem with GCACW is the font size in the rule book. <laughs> I can't read it with, <laughs> with these. Yeah. I can't read that for GCACW rule book. Uh, I actually blew it up and put it on uh, put it on legal size paper, to, so I could see it. I had set up uh, desert. Probably not. The rules are good. I like them. Just can't read them. I had set up Desert Fox from S and T Magazine and um, read through about half the rules, and then I realized it, uh, not that in-depth rules scare me away because they don't but for some reason this one i took it down i never never even moved the first piece on that game because just the little small rule book that it had was was just giving me a headache and i know it's a wonderful game one day i'll come back to it but i took it down and then i turn around i put up another game that i have not read the rules to and that's decision games they're War of whatever it's called, War of Rebellion. That's South Mountain right there. I chose the smallest one of the bunch. And I'm not so sure I'm gonna play that one because I was looking at the way the rules are it's it's that's a brigade <laughs> level get well, it's kind of, this one I would also say is almost a demi brigade too. But the rules are so deep, I may not mm. I, you know what? I'm just gonna go play OCS, I think. <laughs> That conversation went everywhere. Jesus. <laughs> I'm so stuck right now with not being able to get. I can't even finish this last turn of starter kit over here. All right. And Todd's about to catch up to me and I need to get back on board. I haven't finished that. I got one turn left to play in that. You know what it is. It's golf season. That's what's happened. Yeah. You need to give up golf. No, 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 no. Trash can that shit. Your clothes are going into the, into the closet. God. Hey, hey, Camp, real quick. Your your microphone is getting fuzzy every time you talk, so I don't know if you want to kind of reconnect yeah. with it or something. Yeah, let me see if I can do that. Hey, Tony, yeah. good to see you. Um, hey, Hex, Hexy, before um, before we end tonight, I do want to show the – Show uh, the guys what's in this epic box. So, yep, we'll do that. Yeah, there's a lot. Of, I mean, it's so Norda's asking me, poking me because I never answered, which is fair because I was trying to avoid that. Okay. But, <laughs> <laughs> that stuff doesn't get past Nord. Um, I, I, I have to kind of go by period or something. Yeah, you like play too many remote, periods. 
for <laughs> remotely modern stuff, it probably would be SCS. Um, mm-hmm. um, obviously, I really enjoy Blind Swords. I haven't. I don't do a lot of you know pre pre you know 16th century 17th century gaming to be honest with you especially on Mm. the tabletop um so there's obviously a few honorable mentions uh naval wise it's hard to nail down because there's such a proliferation of games that i've played i really enjoy flying colors um i really enjoy it's kind of a a weird one there's only the two games with two scenarios each in them and they're small but the battle dreadnoughts and battle wagons, um, which they do. River, they have a game river play. Nope, oh. <laughs> you cut out. Oh boy, lost his internet. Anyway, um, McMur- McMurray loves Goss, um, <laughs> OCS, ASL. No, yeah, he does play a lot of. That guy plays more. Uh, um, eras than anybody, but a lot of that's in miniature too. And I don't know if McMurray even knows he's off of here. Right. I should send him. I should send him a text. Hey, yeah, Chuck, Chuck, melt the minis <laughs> down, and there won't be a problem anymore. His phone probably died. I'll, I'll try to get hold of him. When well, you guys chat amongst yeah. yourselves. What yeah, do I, well, a question back to you guys in terms of the GCA GCA CW? What do you guys like about that series? <laughs> what don't we like? I mean, I think Todd and I had some <laughs> of our most, our most fun plays. Yeah, I mean, is it the, like the operational stuff? And yeah, yeah, and it, it's not the depth. That, I mean, there's enough detail in the game, and we can even go farther with the advanced rules, which we will, I'm sure, one day. But when you should see the two of us when we're done playing, that's what you don't see on camera is you know, all the sweat and cigarette smoking <laughs> and the discussions that we have about, <laughs> you know, what we did during the play. I think with all the games in, cause what I've been around with you guys now about three years now. And I think of all the games that we've played, the systems that we've played or we've discussed, or, you know, we've each played individually. When we talk about that one, after we've played it, the conversation is just unbelievable. So, so Alan, the, the, my thing is, I don't know Civil War that well. Good, good. So it's, a, it's a good experience. It sounds like it's overall good stuff. Yeah. I mean, so ACW is new to me, so I'm kind of learning. So it's high level enough. I don't have to worry about too much detail. Like, you know, some people who are hardcore ACW people kind of waver on it because you, lo- you, you move off of history real quick. But, I mean, it's the, it's the randomness that I love about it. Like you think you're going to move four hexes and you need to move four hexes and you roll a one on your dice. You move, everyone moves one hex and then your guys tire out. So they're getting tired and you can burn railroad state. I mean, the, the, the randomness is what I I just love. It's just bonkers. And, but yet I know, I bet there are players that can win that game despite that randomness. Right. It's not, it's not so random that you can't, you can't win it if you have strategy. Cause like it wouldn't have lasted this long if it was just a random game. So yeah, but it's I don't know. There, there's just something about at least the craziness I, that, that I love about it. So, and again, it and and it's kind of teaching me because it's so big picture. It's kind of teaching me about the ACW. Good. That, may, Good. that no, maybe, it's uh, kind of curious because I've, I've played some of it. Yeah. So. And but just right, I get all excited, and then the the, the bandoliers come off. It gets crazy again. That's why we can't film it. It's too it's too hot. So we get the hot toddy. <laughs> now there's a miniature. Gotta take a shower afterwards, right. huh? Mm. Maybe. I'm excited to walk about. Looking forward to seeing you get that on the table. <laughs> yeah, that I'm. I can tell you that most fearful sacrifice. You know me. It, it's tempting because it's always like, man, that's a beautiful game. Well, you're about to get real up close and personal with it. It is. We're I've starting in May. I've been begging them for yeah, definitely, definitely worth the play. Yep. What do you mean we're not starting in May, Todd? Why wouldn't we start in May? You said you didn't want to wait and do it all on July 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. Well, I didn't mean... We can play for 72 hours. Like, Just do the real thing? 
Yeah. Perhaps real time. Oh, oh my God. I had a, when I was in junior high, I had a buddy that this is how I got in the Turbo Swiss Sword. <laughs> yeah, he, careful. He, we tried to play it in the 20 minute increments. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's fine for about the first two hours of the game <laughs> on July 1st, but don't dare try to do that on July 2nd or July 3rd. There's no way. That was the cool thing about how we played Bastogne a few years ago, Todd. That's been a few years no, now. We was playing SCS's Bastogne. We, we played that back in the days. day. Mm -hmm. Sorry. <laughs> we played Terrible Swift Swords, but it was it took us four weekends. To... That's that's including Friday, so you know, more like twenty days in the end. Wow. But you finished it though, and that's you seem to do that a lot, which is pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, that's back when we had time when we were we were in high school at that point, so we had, we, we had all the time in the world. Yeah, you mean Can't back do in the that days now. we would ride our bicycles all over town, and mom and dad wouldn't have to worry about us. <laughs> I feel like your mom and dad worried about you. Come on, that was a I'm great game really in, the, in its day. Yeah. I still think it is so. But GBACW and new stuff is way, way better. All right. So I think we're going to, we've gone to about an hour and a half, which is about what we do. Exactly. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to, I'm going to kick it over full screen on top wow. and oh. let Todd show what he's got with this. Because everybody wants to see it, and then we'll come back real quick and have a few outgoing comments and and uh, call it an evening so the Hexy can rest up to play golf tomorrow. Oh, for for Todd Halley, if you're still out there, I shot a two under Tuesday night, buddy. Whatever. <laughs> All right, let me and Big and you, Todd. Lee. All right. I hit a deer. I, I wish hard. I wish you would. Okay, hey, buddy. Hey. Um. All right. So I, I was trying to find out who was asking. I think it was David. Uh, David. Anyway, hey, so, I mean, you, there's probably a good unboxing of this, so we'll just do it real fast. I just recently got a, a, a Command & Colors Napoleonics Epic, and someone was asking what was, I think it was David asking, like, well, what's in it? Obviously, you could read about it, but let's just look at stuff real quick. So, uh, the standard board size for uh, Commands & Colors is 11 hexes deep and 13 wide. So, the Epic... Um, Epic is 11 deep, 20 wide. And basically there's a, like 11 scenarios like this. You can see that this is the, the longest is 20 hexes wide and 11. Obviously it involves a lot more pieces. You usually have to have, um, is that not auto-focusing? Okay, sorry. You usually have to have multiple, um, like all the expansions. So the base game and all the expansions at a minimum. I think you might have to have multiple of the base game at some point when you get to the Le Grand Bétiel. But um, anyway, so there's 11 scenarios like this. And Salamanca, I'm not going to go through all of them. Because like I said, there's probably a really good unboxing. But so, And these come on nice cardboard, so that's cool. There's two Le Grand Bateaux. Uh, <laughs> this is a 26. So 26 hexes wide by 11. And, these and which one's that? Uh, so this is... Um, um, this is the one I'm looking at here is the Vomero, and the one you're looking at there on the camera is Austerlitz. And they also have a bunch of Austerlitz, like separate scenarios on the standard size, too. Um, and there, there's going to be more of these published th this size. Um, it just, it's a lot. <laughs> usually, so usually what you do here, if you don't know, Epic and this, you can play with three to four players a side. So instead of just one on one, which you can also do, You'll have, you know, someone commanding the left, someone commanding the right, and I'm doing it all weird, um, and someone in the left. And then you have one commander who's kind of dishing out the cards, and that commander can only talk to one player per turn or per per uh, card handout. So it's kind of a neat. I played um, Epic, uh, Epic Ancients that way, and it's very fun. I mean, you end up basically playing the person across from you, but you can kind of share some of your units with the guy next to you if you want. Um, so real quick, trying to make this super fast. There's three sets of stickers for the blocks. So you get a bunch of blocks. 
I think it introduces like light infantry, French light, um, Austrian line, some different cannons, some generals, some things like that. Okay. Uh, some new terrain cards, new rules, of course, blocks. Um, all right. So it comes with the epic boards. So these are obviously nice thick boards. I'm guessing these are 10 wide each to make it the 20. So you get that. For the Legrand, Le it's kind of cool. You get two paper maps, which are 13 hexes wide each. You know, they join up and make 26 wide. But it's paper, same hex side, but it's just paper because, you know, probably weight and size and all that handle. Comes with some, um, you know, capture the flag kind of markers because that's how you win. Uh, garrison, nope, these aren't garrisons. These are conscript markers. So you get some markers there, squares, going into squares and all that. Uh, the terrain hexes I have to be very careful with because they pop right out, but some new terrain hexes, more rivers, lots more villages, towns, stuff like that, or cities. And I felt like there was something else I was going to show you. But anyway, that, that's kind of what it comes with. So I, I think, David, hopefully you're still here. If not, well, you'll catch up later. But anyway, so that that's that. And like I said, you pretty much definitely need all the base and the four expansions. With the Legrand, I think you're going to need more. but they're very, they're very unclear about that. Um, so that that is that. And it's funny hearing that there's so again, this is an interesting thing that you know, Alan, you said this. So this is so this is all card determined, right? Whatever my hand of cards says, what I can do each each time it's my turn. Well, that's pretty random, yep. which is one reason I like this. It's also quite simple. But you know, like Alan's saying, he's getting his butt kicked by people who play. I think once you play it, you really learn how to play a game and you can win it again. That shows why the system has stood the test of time because it takes some skill to win consistently. But anyway, all right, gang, we're gonna we're gonna wrap this one up. Good yeah, time, it, it, good it, crowd it really tonight. Is, it all. really is a fun game for. A... And uh, Camp, I'd ask you one last question: What's the next video we're gonna see? Sure. Uh, next video is coming up here is it's going to be about well, one sixtieth anniversary starting back up eighteen sixty four, uh, Shenandoah Valley. So we're going to see some near you, near you, Jeff. Um, New Market's going to be the first one, and then we're going to go straight through uh, Death Valley, GBACW with that plus the extension. So we're going to get Piedmont and Cool Springs. Um, I'm deviating a little bit. Second Kerns Town is actually going to be Blind Swords because uh, they just wanted to mix it up. I was getting a little little tired of that system. So you're going to see that. That's actually on the table right in front of me right now. I'm going to get started with that this weekend. But they'll start coming out here right at the anniversary here. So you'll see that in the next uh, couple weeks once May rolls around. I may throw something up beforehand if I can get it finished. But I'll make that a surprise okay. uh, on there as well. So see some Always of that, there. and then some more Panzer stuff. Uh, you you guys are really pushing me to pushing me into squad leader again, so I may get some of that in there too, <laughs> some point. We have a bad effect on people sometimes. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> All right, so hey, everybody out there, uh, again on YouTube, <laughs> Camp Sawyer, get over there, check his channel out. He he guys, he plays games all the way through and he films the stuff. He doesn't hold the camera while he's moving everything around on the board, but he gives you sort of a turn by turn with his camera. And he does such a great job with doing the stuff. And we all know that there's very few people out there that film a game from start to finish. Um, I, I, I could probably count on one hand the games that I played from start to finish, you know, easily. So. Camp Sawyer on YouTube. Appreciate everybody that joined. All the questions tonight, good stuff. And Alan, appreciate you coming on here with us, brother. And we'll talk to all you guys later. See ya. See ya. Yes. Thanks Good for having me on. Take care. Bye-bye.